<laughs> okay, actually there's already several questions that come in. So uh, first let me introduce the panel uh, who we have here today. We've actually got it in the program, but I didn't want to go ahead and just have them raise their hand and identify themselves. Uh, from the far this side, we have Jason Earl, who's our director of software engineering. Hey Jason. Hey guys, I uh, just to give you a little background on myself, I'm married with two kids. I uh, first got interested in computers back in the mid-80s when we had a Commodore 64. And uh, my dad and I would take these, the Byte magazine with the code that was published in them and we'd copy those into the computer and hear crazy sounds coming out of the speakers and that was all it took to get that spark in my head. So, but here, like to have you actually totally same story. We think we might have about that. Maybe we're right. Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> next we have Josh Patterson. Josh is a senior engineer on the team. Josh, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah. Um, not very good kids. Uh, I have a cat. <laughs> she probably occupies 50% of my work day. Uh, begging for attention. So, 
All right, next question. Um, there's a question here that's gotten a lot of the votes about, uh, I'll just read it because I actually love the word. Can you give us more information on the changes to security on the licensing in this future roadmap? Kind of feels like two questions, but I feel like it's more centered around licensing. So, who wants to feel that? Doug, Mike? Yeah. Repeat the question, please. Licensing. Licensing. Sure. All right. So, you know, licensing is a great topic. Um, you know, I've been involved in free open source software since 1997. I, I first learned of this concept of free open source software and it kind of blew my mind. Uh, so, I've all in a lot of different open source communities for many years. And finally, in 2008, it was time for me to start my own open project. And so, uh, very much committed to being a, a free and open project for the long term. You know, we are providing commercial features and commercial products around that core free and open product, but you know, no change to really, no plans to change that anytime soon. Um, you know, we hear from time to time of different components changing their licensing. Uh, one that was hinted at earlier is the Hive. They recently made a change in their licensing. Uh, we had already had plans to kind of change that we are doing case management in the future. And so when they made their announcement they were changing their licensing, that kind of confirmed the decision that we had already made. So, you know, we're committed, you know, even though other projects may change their licensing from time to time, we're committed to, you know, continuing to go forward with a free and open platform. Anyone want to add to that? I think from a roadmap perspective, Doug's got a few slides on that in the State of the Union, so I don't want to steal some of it there, but um, you know, besides the Windows stuff that I did earlier, yeah, that you know, would be the good uh, thing to stay around for. All right, great. Great. Um, all right, so there's some, uh, there's a lot of interest in this question as well regarding CentOS and operating system going forward. So I think there's a little bit of misunderstanding that probably needs to be clarified about CentOS and end of, life, end of life on maybe one particular version, which is the version we use. There's a lot of confusion, specifically in one of our uh, customer verticals that has that misunderstanding a lot. Definitely would love to kind of hear what your thoughts are, Mike, on future uh, operating systems on which security are going to Yeah, so our plans are to keep supporting them on two, um, but the main platform is going to probably shift to well, not probably, it's going to shift to Rocky and Linux. Um, there's no huge rush because Synthos has a few more years of support, so uh, the goal right now is to you know, switch over to uh, Rocky, but um, the requirement there is Bobby and we're getting there, so. Anything to add? So I think part of that key too is, is right, we support CentOS 7 today and CentOS 8 that's actually finding its right. end very soon, yeah. which I think is part of that misunderstanding. If you have any more to add to that, please go ahead and add it into the panel. Um, all right, so next. Um, this is probably not as much of a developer question, but this gives, uh, this will give you something, Mr. Josh Brower. Um, can you give us any advice about using security on new tools for detecting lateral movements? Sure, so um, Security Onion has the ability to uh, obviously ingest both network data as well as endpoint data logs from other applications. And so from a lateral movement perspective, we can detect that either from the network side of things or endpoint side of things. Um, specifically endpoints, we have Playbook, the component that was a little bit earlier, uh, which has sigma rules uh, built in, and uh, there's quite a number of sigma rules that targets uh, different, um, different log sources like built-in Windows event logs as well as sysmon logs. And so, uh, you know, being able to bring those, um, that log source into Security Onion and then enable those plays in Playbook will definitely get you, at least from an alerting perspective, will get you the ability to generate alerts off of that. You can always go over to Hunt and do some manually hunting, or excuse me, manual hunting, um, looking for lateral movement. So you can kind of look at it both from the automated alerting from signal rules and things like that, as well as um, from a hunting perspective. Do we have fun adding anything to that? All right. All right, well, that'll be you, sir. Um, there's some interest here in, I think, uh, Jason, this might be for you, um, interest in a single sign-on between SOC, that is to say the Security Enemy Console, uh, Kibana, and all the other tools so that, you know, as you click the various options, like an alert on Kibana, your logging state persists all the way through. So single sign-on. 
So rather than us build our own authentication platform into security end, we opted to use another open source project called Kratos. And that's provided by an organization called ORI, O-R-Y. Uh, it's a Germany-based organization, but uh, lots of open source contributors throughout the world. <clears throat> so we're really relying on them to provide these capabilities. And when it comes to student sign-on, they do offer <clears throat> additional um, projects in that ORI ecosystem to support that. So, we have the door is open for us to do more. Um, one of the things that we have to be mindful of is the licensing restrictions that we're faced with with our third-party projects that we integrate into security. And so if those third-party projects have license restrictions on the free version, then it limits what we can do and, it's, and our limit, you know, as far as we can go with uh, the single sign-on. So we are looking at it. We're constantly trying to find ways to make
Um, let's talk about encrypted data. There's uh, one question in there that's kind of specific about, you know, stream doesn't have a way to recognize encrypted data, not to, I'm not talking about parsing encrypted data, but to filter out data that's not encrypted. And then several people have voted this question. So uh, the question is, is why does the security of it detect encrypted data and allow us to filter it out completely? I can answer that, but I want to see which one of you wants to take that. Um, you know, we're, we're stuck with, you know, we are limited to the part of running unless there's nothing that for you. So, um, there are things you can do to uh, try and filter out that data. A lot of times you can do it on the PCAP side. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a challenge, but it's, it's really limited to the tools that we use. So we don't do anything special to the tools to, you know, enable them to do anything special. Um, you know, I know there are features in some things that can say, hey, if this is encrypted, way of doing something. Uh, and you can look at that, but you know, it's just a challenge with the tools. And you know, our focus is you know, really on bringing in that network data product as well as the hosts. So you know, trying, to, trying to fill that gap on the encryption side of the those data. All right, thank you very much. Anyone have anything else to add to that regarding the encrypted data? Josh, do you have anything you want to say about that, Josh Carl? Just mentioned since Mike mentioned post data. Talk about post data real quick. Um, uh, so if we think about you know over eight percent of that north south traffic um, is now encrypted, which is great from a privacy perspective, but not so great from a security monitoring perspective. Between that as well as um, work from home challenges with COVID last year and a half, and just many people work from from home and the lack of uh, visibility into network data for our organizations. Um, we want to continue to augment that with uh, any other types of data that's available, whether that's data uh, generated by applications or from the endpoint perspective. And so I'll just put another plug in here for the, the, the point that inside security, we have the ability to do things like um, OS query or Wazoo or Winlock Beats or Beats or um, Velociraptor from Wes's integration. So being able to pull in that data as much as possible, I always end up um, looking at a puzzle and how, as an analyst, you see an alert. That's one piece of the puzzle. Then you pivot from there and move over to Zclaws. That's another piece of the puzzle. Then you uh, pivot over to Sysmon data from the community ID, and that's another piece of the puzzle. Pretty soon, you're now able to put this puzzle together and see the whole view of what's going on in your network, being able to bring in those different data types. And so definitely encrypted data, we don't, you know, we can glean value from that in a variety of different ways, but we definitely want to make sure we're augmenting that. So just another plug to continue to, to look at bringing in uh, post data inside security as well. Thank you, Josh. Um, I believe this next one probably for Jason, I think Jason wants to say. Uh, will there be additional functionality included in Security Onion regarding cloud infrastructure, specifically parsing Azure keywords or fields so that they can be easily identified and queried in a safety bomb of the minute, say not? Well, uh, actually I actually think Mike would be able to provide a lot of commentary on this since we just recently did some of this, but um, we do support, um, well, with ADCF genes, we support uh, ingest from all kinds of sources, and that includes Azure. So, uh, yeah, we can do that, and they can show me a client. Uh, Mike, anything you want to add? Yeah, we use the standard routing models. We into our production environment. We have something to do with anything that goes into all of that into our production environment using the swapping models. Uh, I think even one of the examples was based off of something that we've already done. So the swapping modules that were pushed in was a 2370. Yeah, I mean, those are a big deal and you can grab that data for us straight away. It's great. Okay, what a great answers. Um, let's see. So if someone wants to know what our official position is on DC versus Marvel. <laughs> VI, uh, Nano, or Emacs. <laughs> Keep 
Pico. Pico. Yeah. <laughs>
would say, if I was going to try to one-up the other hand, my, my shorter answer would be time, <laughs> just time. If we were to try to re replicate all that all these tools do, we wouldn't be able to provide any of the features that really focus on what we're trying to do. You know, so we can spend our time building out things like on an alert interface, or we can spend our time trying to rebuild salt in Go or some other common language. And it just, you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to reproduce what's already there. Well said, sir. So let's see here. Again, if you have any other questions that you want to upvote or that you want to ask, um, some of these have turned into an ask me anything as opposed to uh, ask me some developer questions. <laughs> um, there's an automation scripts question here, which has been upvoted, but I don't understand it. Um, I mean, so I'll just ask. I think I'm just the only one that doesn't. Um, why do the automation scripts for deploying a node not function as expected? In which do we expect documentation? Automation scripts? I'm guessing they're talking about the setup slash automation directory, which contains the, uh, the basically uh, bootstrap variable for testing, automating our testing of security and free to release. And we have them right where we want them as far as how they suit us, because that's what they were intended to do. They were intended to automate testing so that we don't have to do everything manually every time we do a release. And if you're you know, watching along in the forums or the blogs or Twitter, group releasing quite often. It's not a full release. There's hot fixes or patches. And if we were to have to do manual testing on all of that, it would really delay how quickly we can get stuff out to you guys. OK, thanks, Jason. Appreciate that. Very good. That's a lot of glad I decided to ask that question. Um, all right, so these other ones are uh, about like, other integrations of maybe less. There's a question about uh, potential, and this could be a, a marker uh, question as well. Potential for integrating Velociraptor natively. Any thought or consideration you need to give to that? I think that might be best for you. We don't have any formal plans to integrate. Uh, we don't have any formal plans to integrate Velociraptor this time. It is, uh, it is an integration that we contain and we're looking to develop more and uh, that we may look into. So it's, it's definitely worth considering, but I uh, will say we don't officially support it this time. Do you have any other thoughts? You know, obviously, we're looking at, you know, we're trying to take a different tact with how we integrate the tools. We want to make sure that it fits in the ecosystem and make sure it's stable and everything like that. So, you know, a lot of things you see are. Us testing it out, and if it works really good, we start working on, it, working on bringing it in. So it's, we don't just slam things in, we kind of pull them in as we go. So a lot of driver is probably something you'll see in the future. Um, same with the few possibilities officially supported. Um, it just takes some time. Pretty great. There have been some really great questions. I've got one more question for every person on the panel. Jason, we'll, we'll start with you. What feature or Code and security on them. Are you most proud of them? Uh, well, it's, it's not that I'm proud of it, but I'm happy with how it turned out, and that's the modularity of the building portion of the SOC. And um, what I mean by that is from the beginning, um, all of the integration to external products, like Kratos I mentioned earlier, or even Elasticsearch, all of those are by an interface that allows us to plug in a different module if we need to. So thinking back to Wes's talk, 50 sensors, you have to go and click on each dashboard to kind of see what's going on in your environment. That doesn't really scale very well. Um, so I was like, hey, while we're redoing this, let's uh, make this more user friendly. Um, so that's where the overview uh, dashboard came from. Um, the ability to get a better picture of your entire grid um, without having to click on everything individually. And that's one thing you know about that we have as well. Sir, what's your name? I think for me, the uh, thing that I am most proud of to have contributed is Playbook and just um, got born out of uh, where we previously running the security and just wanting. Quick and simple way to 
playbook concept started, and then eventually brought that into uh, more security and core. And um, that's that's the thing that I, I think I still enjoy doing. So, uh, so that's what I'm most proud of. I think for me, um, I guess one of the more recent ones, and this is really a, a team effort, wasn't just myself, but um, getting the file view module functionality built in to your security engine to be able to flip on uh, really quickly so many different sources of telemetry and, and logs and, and different types of data uh, really helps to scale the power of security and to uh, again, enterprise security monitoring, which is what we try to advocate for. Um, so really, really happy about that. And, um, and then also, Jason did a lot of work with the, the AWS cloud image and just but trying to being involved with that and getting more of the cloud and stuff and, and data and telemetry and just in general other uh, sources onboarded in the security engine and making it in a one viable platform for so many different spaces. I think that was that was most uh, um, mine's not really a feature or anything. Um, mine is more of a I guess a higher level thing. And that is I think about what four years ago I was sitting in the basement. Both have some visions, and we, we worked on combining that vision. Um, and to get out the you know, best product we could, it took a long time to get to a while. But I think that is the, you know, the, the hundreds of thousands of people downloaded it and, and you know, really just embraced our sort of you know, vision from, a, from an organization on how to uh, go after events, go after the bad guys, um, and you know, the patience of everybody in the community because it is a, there's a learning curve. But you know, as you scale off to hundreds of sensors, it starts to make more sense what, what we've done. So um, that's probably the, the most thing I've You kind of stole my answer. Sorry. Because here's what I was going to say. Uh, I started this little platform in 2008, and it was just a hobby project. And was able to kind of maintain it throughout the years, make it a little bit better over the years, and add things here, and uh, streamline things there. Uh, but ultimately, Mike and the rest of the team have really kind of taken that to the whole, whole other level with security on YouTube. It's more powerful, it's more scalable, it's more configurable, it's got more bells and whistles. Uh, and so it's, it's an amazing uh, amount of just elevation of the platform that I'm very, very proud of. And then I can also say things like, uh, you know, the Hunt interface. I built the prototype for that. Um, and it was okay, but Jason took it to a whole other level because he's a hundred thousand billion times the developer that I could ever dream of being. And there's many times where I might submit a uh, GitHub pull request, and as much as I think that I've double checked it and triple checked it and quadruple checked it, Jason will always find something to improve on it. So. Um, these guys have done an amazing job, so I think what I would say that I'm most proud of is the team that we've built here. You know, we're, we're all, we all have great ideas, we're all passionate about our ideas, um, and fortunately we've not killed each other yet uh, in, in being strong and passionate about those ideas, but we come up with great ideas and we execute on those great ideas and make great products. So, I'm proud of you guys, I'm proud of the team that we've built. Thank you for all that you do. And we might have more to say about that too later. Maybe. All right. All right, let's give her the gold panel on a round of applause. All right, so we've reached afternoon break time. Let's